and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. This week, we are talking about Return of Swamp Thing, as picked by Scott, which I think anybody who's listened to the show for the last five years could have guessed that, because, man, Scott has a boner for the Swamp Thing. I do. <laughs> I'm going to say a hot take before, and keep in mind, this hasn't... This is coming out in 2020, but this is 2019 right now. Best movie I watched for this this show in 2020. I'm calling it in December of 2019. <laughs> Dude, you... I, th- not possible, because we're going to do Tammy and the T-Rex in a couple weeks. I stand by my statement. I haven't even seen <laughs> Tammy and the T-Rex, but if it's anything like the other T-Rex movie I had with Whoopi Goldberg, I don't want to see it. Return of the Swamp Thing, Scott... Obviously, we know why you picked this, because you fucking love Swamp Thing. I and do. there's enough monsters in this for it to actually constitute as a horror movie night pick. Uh, so why not, right out the gate, because I've never read Swamp Thing. I never had an interest in Swamp Thing, because I saw the Wes Craven movie and thought that it sucked, so I just immediately like cut out. But uh, I love this movie. Tell me about Swamp Thing, so I have some type of backstory to what is happening in this movie. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, because this movie is kind of... It's like a word salad of the Alec, Alan Moore uh, run kind of. Well, OK, let me start at the beginning here. So in the 70s, uh, Len Wein created Swamp Thing and he, for DC. And that original Swamp Thing was a uh, more of like a, an action superhero type character where he um, kind of... I, to me, when I reread the Len Wein stuff, um, it feels kind of like the Lou Ferrigno Incredible Hulk TV show where it was like this monster that didn't want to hurt anybody. And he went around town to town, more or less, like in an episodic way, helping people uh, and, and, you know, fighting bad guys and, and kind of helping the environment kind of thing. Um, I don't really like the original Len Wein series. I think it lasted for six or eight years. I can't quite remember. Um, And then it fell away. They stopped doing it until I want to say 83 or 84 when Alan Moore got hold of it and started doing Saga of the Swamp Thing. And Alan Moore mostly worked with an artist named Stephen Bissett. I have always loved Swamp Thing though. So I don't, and I don't know why, because I didn't watch the Wes Craven Swamp Thing when I was a kid. It came out in 1981, I think. Uh, But it was always, the character was always on my radar and I just loved the idea of this plant man. I just, I I don't know why, but it just, I was obsessed with it. There's actually a picture that I will take a picture of and post it in the group when we we put this uh, episode out. The first cake that I, I think I ever made uh, in my life, I might have been six or seven or something like that. Um, was a, a a vanilla sponge cake, right, or whatever, mm-hmm. and, or a sheet cake rather, that my dad and I then decorated with frosting and stuff to look like Swamp Thing. And I don't know why I was obsessed with Swamp Thing. Like I think I had the Swamp Thing toy that I got at like a Big Lots or something like that. I didn't. I don't. I really don't know why the obsession with Swamp Thing started the way it did uh, or how it did. But at the end of college, um, I, I was doing a capstone project, like a, an independent study, where I was writing a long form essay research project that lasted, it lasted more or less an, a year and a half. So three semesters, because the, the second semester of junior year, so my third year, you started, you start this independent study. And if you like that, topic you can do it for your full year independent study your fourth slash senior year and so I I was doing one about masculinity and comic books because I was a sociology major and I really liked the idea of Swamp Thing being this anti-masculine hero because in Alan Moore's Swamp Thing series he really pushes on the fact that Swamp Thing is this he's an elemental he's a plant elemental you know like an earth elemental character and so he really can't die he also is incredibly powerful like he has the the ability to control anything in the green quote unquote which is kind of like the the soul of the earth a lot of the conflict resolution is non-violent a lot of it is him kind of like looking at this foe or or this situation and figuring out a a he's not punching things to death you know it's he does 
destroy some monsters. Um, but there's so much of it where it's like, how can you fight this thing? And he figures out very clever ways. It's also because Alan Moore was doing a fuckload of drugs and it feels very psychedelic, which also I don't do drugs. So it, why would I like psychedelic artwork? But Stephen Bissett killed it. He's just an amazing artist. So that, that's kind of a little bit of the backstory. I know I just spent five minutes rambling about how much I love Swamp Thing, but I want to mention one thing about Stephen Bissett. I've, he's probably my favorite comic book artist besides Jim Lee. And Megan for the longest time was trying to find a an original piece from Swamp Thing from the Alan Moore run of Swamp Thing to give me as a Christmas present. Couldn't find him because they were like four grand for a piece of paper, you know, and I was like, don't ever spend that money. And so she does some research. She finds Stephen Bissett's email address, becomes friends with him and has him. She commissions a a piece of Swamp Thing and Man Thing that says to Scott. And and that was my big Christmas present last year. It was it's incredible. It's just insane. Sorry to uh Geek History Lesson, because Scott kind of just stole their <laughs> their whole shtick for for eight minutes. So if you want to learn even more about Swamp Thing, go and check out our friends at Geek History Lesson and listen to their episode on the greatest Swamp Thing stories. And I'm pretty sure they have an individual episode just on the history of Swamp Thing as well. Uh, it's a great podcast for you to learn things about comic book characters that you uh, may not have actually read any books about. Let's get into, and thank you all for for letting me, uh, if you fast forwarded through that, that's totally fine. But also <laughs> if you want to uh, know what Stephen Bissett's artwork looks like, this entire intro scroll is, is well, almost all of it is artwork from Stephen Bissett's run with Alan Moore on Saga of the Swamp Thing. There's also some stuff from the Len Wein run as well, but um, most of it's Stephen Set. Now, before we even get to the opening credit, because there's at least two things oh. that they happen before we even get there. Yeah. First of all, the movie opens and just reminds me of the paintball scene from Jason Lips. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like, just some guys just hanging out in the woods, wandering around in a swamp. <laughs> I'm tired of this slimy crap. Just team building exercise. But the other thing that I love about this movie, and like, first of all, the big difference to me between Return of the Swamp Thing and the Wes Craven Swamp Thing is that, like, the Swamp Thing suit look, just looks so much better oh, yeah. in this movie. Because it actually looks like it's part of a swamp versus, like, <laughs> like the, uh, I don't know, like, the, the Wes Craven Swamp Thing just kind of looks like the 70s Incredible Hulk with, like, vines on it. Like, it's not <laughs> a very good suit. But, man, not only are they proud of that Swamp Thing suit, they are proud of this monster suit, as they should be, Dude, and uh, show it right yeah. out the gate. Like, there's no, like, Jaws build where it takes us a couple, like, an hour to see what these monsters look like. It's like, he looks at it, and you see it in all of its monster glory, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is uh is the original Swamp Thing movie is that horror, or yeah. is Wes Craven did like a comic book movie? Just like a family comic book movie. Oh, yeah. This is this is such a better movie. But I I did laugh out loud uh, when you know we had this whole scene. These guys are getting just ripped apart by this monster, and then Swamp Thing comes and saves them, uh, and then immediately kick into the credence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, the born, the born on a bayou fucking intro with the comics. It was like, oh man, what a perfect intro. Yeah, born on a bayou. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun. I and the funniest thing was that for a second I didn't realize it was that Credence song. <laughs> I thought it was another Credence song, which auto also would have fit. I thought it was a uh, run through the jungle. <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, born on the bayou, perfect song to kick off this movie, and like. Here's the thing. Do I this isn't a movie that I necessarily love, but I like it a lot. And the big reason I like it is because my god, there are so many monster practical effects that just keep popping up through this movie and they all look fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I was as I was watching it, I was like I have three potential double features and I'm fairly confident that I will have to use my third because I just feel like we're all going to pick the same three double features unless something yeah. goes super obscure. Yeah, so I'm holding off on references right yeah. now because because <laughs> there's two big ones in my mm. mind. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like that, like there's that bee creature that's like on the table. Oh and yeah. There's, oh my god, the, there's like the like half crocodile man. There's an elephant. It's, it's basically edit. freaked. 
Yeah, uh, it's so- <laughs> he did a reference. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's wild. Some of the stuff that that they have in this movie, and I love it. I love it. And I thought that that would be the highlight of the movie for me. That it wouldn't get better than the crazy practical effects monsters. And then we introduce the kid that sounds like a mixture of the old lady from Poltergeist, Cartman, and the egg lady from Egg Poltergeist. Lady. I said it was the egg lady to myself. I was like, oh, he's going for the egg lady. 100%, dude. That kid is someone high up's child because he is a shit actor. He's the highlight of the movie, though, because he's just – he, and he looks like the kid – who gets killed by the chocolate in um, Trick or Treat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I fucking Bad love Santa the kids. Kid. Yeah. I love these kids so much. They really, <laughs> this movie is kind of mediocre. Like I, I love, mm. I love Swamp Thing and I love monsters. I love the idea of the unmen, which is actually like the, the monsters in this are the unmen because in the cartoon, uh, Anton Arcane is doing these experiments and and he makes these unmen. So this is kind of like a bastardization of a million different Swamp Thing ideas. But um, I, my favorite is definitely the Kmart Cthulhu that pops up at the beginning. Um, yeah, he's he's just such a such a sick like mask because it also has some sort of animatronics in the front so that his little uh, I don't know what creature he's supposed to be because there's like this crocodile man and there's a um, or alligator man and there's a there's a bug man and there's a, you know, a, a, an elephant man and a whatever. But I don't know what animal they mixed him with. Do you guys know? No, he he almost um, what was he was reminding me of something that I'd seen in another movie and I'm blanking on what it was now. But, yeah, he's just got this long, like long jaw with like teeth all down the sides and it's just this constant like slurping noise yeah, coming yeah, out of it's, it. It's just so so cool. I just absolutely love the look of that character. Like if I got to the point where I was talented and and ambitious enough to do that as a mask, like l- figure out how to do that mask and actually put animatronics in it, that would be that would be what I would want to do because it's just so so fucking cool. But yeah, like the the movie to me is really success succeeds on how funny those kids are and how amazing the practical effects are throughout this film. Absolutely, and uh, the one kid reminds me so much of the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. like even though this movie is so much older than Stranger Things. Yeah, well, he's. <laughs> the, the, I have one note that just says that's just so much porn. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Uh, oh like, oh, I have lines from that. Um. Wow, I can't believe it. Look at these babes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, I fucking God. love it. Also, you know what else I love? I love all the female mercenary guards in spaghetti strap tanks and pleather boots. <laughs> it's, okay, we, we do need to talk about the fact that this was directed by Jim Wynorski. Yes. Which yes, absolutely it makes it a uh, horror movie night movie. The, I mean, Chopping Mall, this. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know who else is involved in this movie? Chuck Serino did the soundtrack. He's also the guy that did the soundtrack for Chopping Mall. This movie, so uh, Jim Wynorski was given a $4 million budget and 30 days to get it done. He got it done in 27. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to know what this movie fucking grossed globally? No. <laughs> Two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I I I I was blown away. I don't think that there has been a box office bomb on this show as bad as that ever. So uh, one of the fun facts from the IMDb information is, uh, according to the D- DVD commentary. Director Jim Wynorski wanted Lewis Jordan to refer to one of the characters oh, yeah. as Point. Uh, Mr. Jordan refused because he knew that the character's nickname was a sexual innuendo referring to her breasts. Wynorski then said, weren't you just in a movie called Octopussy? <laughs> Jordan refused to speak to Wynorski for the rest of the shoot. <laughs> for as much of like a, a, a creep as Jim Wynorski probably was and is, uh, he's pretty funny. Like 
he yeah. does and <laughs> says some really funny shit that we that has been passed down to us. Oh man, but um, the 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 even better part about it is that uh, if we're talking about IMDb trivia, I wrote this down: Ace Mask. That's an actual person's name. Plays a character yeah. called Dr. Rochelle. He also played a character called Dr. Rochelle in both Not of This Earth, 1988, and Ghoulies 4, 1994. Nice. All three well, movies not- were directed by Jim Wynorski. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's something that's kind of wild. Because um, I just clicked into Jim Wynorski's filmography real quick. So IMDb, as you know, has a section that pops up called Known 4, where they list the four most famous movies that that director did. (laughs) They fucked up with Jim Wynorski because Jim Wynorski's four most well-known movies, according to IMDb, are The Lost Empire, Final Voyage, Camel Spiders, and Fire from Below. Huh. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, he just put out a movie last year called Cobra Gator. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that Chuck did the... I think that Chuck does all of his music for all of his shitty movies. Like, if you followed Chuck Serino on any social media, you are just astonished at the, the some of the movies that are being made right now that you will never hear of or watch. I still kind of want to see Nessie in me from 2016 because it looks like Nessie is a claymation monster throughout the whole movie. <laughs> He uh, he also made a movie called Scared Topless. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jim Wynorski is just a treasure. I so hold on a second. Okay, so let's go through this. I want you to note that all of these movies are listed as TV movies. I have a pretty good idea of what channel they were playing <laughs> on. It was Scared Topless, Shark Babes. Sex Pod and Pleasure Spa and Sexy Wives Sentations. Can we have a can we have a a, a a spinoff show that's just us watching like porn? Like He's like only porn. only monster porn. <laughs> Cause I just rolled down the next one and it's just called Busty Coeds vs. Lusty Cheerleaders. Like Jim Wynorski. Is just making porn he's a sleaze. now. Yeah, he's always been a sleaze. The hills have thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good pun. The devil wears not a. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> is it but porn or is, is it softcore? I guess it's softcore because again, they're all listed as TV movies. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love those. Lusty, those porns I would watch for the show because they're the lusty, busty barbecue. The Da Vinci Coed. <laughs> House on Hooter Hill. <laughs> oh, oh shit, guys. Yes. The Breastford Wives. <sighs> These are awful. Witches of Breastwick 2. <laughs> there was a sequel. <laughs> well, I mean, there are two breasts on most people. Yeah. He leans on the same joke every time. Alabama Jones and the Busty Crusade. I mean, dude. <sighs> the Bear Wench Project. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I may have seen a piece of the Bear Wench Project. <laughs> he made f- three Bear Wench Project movies. So, damn, Jim Wynorski, what happened to your career? He, <laughs> you were making good movies. All he wants to do is see titties and get paid to see titties. So he's living the dream, apparently. Yeah. Can't knock the hustle. Yeah. I guess you can't. I guess it was Ghoulies 4 and Munchie Strikes Back that really did it for him, because those were the last real movies that it seems like he made. Did he make Munchie as well? And he made Munchie, yes. Man, fuck He did not make Munchies, but he made Munchie. Munchie's stupid as fuck. Starring Dom DeLuise. Yep. (laughs) But we did Munchies for the show, right? We did Munchies, yeah, the Gremlins ripoff. Yeah. And then Brian used to watch Munchie all the time. No, I never did. I wanted to. Yes. Oh, you you wanted to? How did I see Munchie? I don't know because I remember I sent Dad to rent it, and he came back with Muppets on Treasure Island when Josh Marquardt was over, and I had a temper <laughs> tantrum because I <laughs> so oddly so I wasn't I wasn't smart enough to go to first grade. I got held back from first grade, and when we were in transitional, there used to be little people when we were learning about the letters of the alphabet. And for M, there was this Munchie guy that looked just like the cover of Munchie, and I was like, I need to see it. And uh, it didn't happen. Oh, I watched it on on Netflix. It was on Netflix one day, and I was like, huh, let me check this out. 
Um, there's one line delivery that I love to bring it back to Return of Swamp Thing. One line delivery that I absolutely love where it's Heather Locklear. Oh, yeah. Side note, Heather Locklear is in this movie. Yeah. And, and she's, you know, I, I'm not really into blondes or anything like that, but um, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Really yeah. very, very beautiful. Uh, she, uh, she's like flirting with one of the guards. Oh, yeah. And like, He's like, hey, baby, I'm a doctor. And she's like, oh, bet you can't guess what my favorite oper- operation is. A vasectomy. And then she knees him in the balls. But he goes from, like, smooth talking. He just goes, I'm going to kill you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It, this movie is just a mess. And it's, it's fun. A, it is one of the weirdest movies we've watched for this podcast. Yeah, in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I have to agree. The the so they they completely ruin the whole concept of who Abigail Arcane is and uh, Anton Arcane. Anton Arcane is supposed to be, um, and and they touch upon it like the he's supposed to be this doctor who sells his soul to the devil for eternal life. Um, and they kind of, he says something along that line where she's like, um, did you make a pact with the devil or something like that? And he says, yes, something like that. Um, or she's, maybe she said, did you sell your soul? And he said something like that. So they do touch on that and they touch on Alec Holland's, uh, transition into Swamp Thing a little bit, but, and they talk about, um, and she does get killed and then he brings her back. These are all things that happened in the comic books, but they're just glossed over in such odd ways because Jim Wynorski's like, you know what we need in a Swamp Thing movie? Fucking grenades. <laughs> yeah, it's it definitely feels like um, you watch this and it, it's one of those movies where you watch this and you look at like what they've been able to do with the, the MCU like all these years later. And it's it's impressive that they like I don't know like the MCU does this great job of sticking to these very intricate comic book storylines while making it easily accessible if you never read those comics, mm-hmm. but like not ever fully glossing over anything. Where like there are so many chunks of this that based on what you're saying feel very fan servicey like oh we just got to throw this line in so yeah. that the people who've read the comics are like okay cool they remembered that <laughs> like, oh and but and the, the the worst part about that is the the sex scene because um well here's the line beforehand he goes i'm a plant and she goes that's okay i'm a vegetarian and that's either a cannibalism joke or a blowjob joke or both I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Um, and then he pulls off this tiny little, um, it's like a uh, like a baby bok choy or something. I don't know. Or it's like a little, some, some sort of cabbage. And he takes a bite, she takes a bite, and then they trip balls, have sex as humans in the comic book. And so if you, if anybody's ever seen my left arm, I have a half sleeve tattoo of the tuber. It looks kind of like a sweet potato that, Swamp Thing gives to Abby. He gives it to people, and they it's it's a way for humans to connect with the green. And that's how they have sex in the comic book. Is like it's not even sex, it's a joining of souls. And this is just such a a gratuitous bastardization of that concept. And for a four million dollar fucking budget. I would expect a little bit of the trippy visuals from the comic book. Just a little bit. Instead of just two people naked hugging with a fog machine in the background. <laughs> it just really, really frustrated me. Because um, I hadn't watched this movie. Oh, man. I don't. I, it's been probably 15 years since I last saw this. This is only my second time watching it. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. I mean, I could still enjoy it for what it was. And I really wanted to talk about it on the show because, you know, monsters and Swamp Thing. Yeah. But... It just, like, I don't get fanboy e or, you know, like, a fucking incel nerd about Star Wars. I don't care about the minute of the Star Wars universe. I love talking about it, but I don't care if somebody gets it wrong. I do care when someone gets Swamp Thing wrong, so wrong on so many levels, so many times in an hour and a half movie. <laughs> <laughs> eh, they fucked I on their first there's... date, too. Yeah. Hey, 
you know, but then she turned into a plant or started to at the end. Yeah. Uh, she'd look great with fins or maybe flippers. Yeah, definitely flippers. I also love when the villain, like, very unceremoniously kills his assistant with a gun that you don't know is there. Yeah. But it's like, it's, I don't know, it's so unintentionally funny because they just go in for a hug and then it's the most ADR gunshot. <laughs> and she like, she's just like, oh, I'm dead. I'm not like, yeah. I, I, she got shot in the stomach. <laughs> she's not dead. Yeah. Uh, anything else with Swamp Thing? Yeah, there's other things to talk about, but I think we missed some things. Uh, the only thing I really want to talk about is um, that crazy mercenary who's like been trying to, who is, or not, um, yeah, the that mercenary that was like, I'll go kill you, you know? Um, yeah. He goes after Swamp Thing, I want to say, and he goes, I got you now, Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and then Swamp Thing blows him up with another grenade. Like, what? Oh. I also love the kids trying to get photos with Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah. Like it's such a weird B plot line to this whole movie. This whole movie is a B plot line. Uh, that is true. But the, the, the funniest monster in this is definitely Doctor Rochelle with his crazy head because he comes busting out of the spot where um, he got mutated, I guess, and then he takes a hit off of his inhaler before he's gonna go one v one against a Swamp Thing creature elemental like no way that he can fight anybody <laughs> uh what a what a film it was right, it was so, worth a watch oh certainly brian it's my, brian's favorite movie of the year dude we'll we're, see how that... we're watching pumpkin head two blood wings what are you talking about <laughs> oh yeah i may have spoke uh, too right. soon <laughs> so does anybody have a double feature with this movie scott you picked it you kicked of course it i have a double feature unlike you two weirdos i write my double features down immediately upon finishing these i got two of them up in here well mm -hmm. you can't say freaked <laughs> okay so i have no, two I, of them up in here <laughs> <laughs> no matt you can be freaked because i know that's what you would really want to do um no that's not, that actually was not one of the two that i had okay and i'm not I doing guess, freaked yeah. i'm gonna do guyver 2 dark Fuck. hero Son Fuck. of a bitch. Yeah. Are you guys serious? I got, yeah, that was I got one up here. I got, I got one left. <laughs> I mean, though. I technically had, I had, I had Giver one, the first Giver. Giver one isn't nearly as puppetry. similar. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I just think for me, it was because the bug monster immediately made me think of Mark Hamill turning into a bug monster. Yep. <laughs> Kill me. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Giver, Giver two, the dark hero. Uh, I'm going to go with Brian. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm going to go with the Tosca yeah, Avenger. That's all three. Yeah. That's all, <laughs> all right. I'm going to go with Meet the Think Feebles. Three. Ooh. <laughs> Meet and the I'm, Feebles? Yeah, and I'm not happy about it. The other three I'd be more than happy to watch. I would watch Guyver, one or two, Toxic Avenger, fucking Freaked. I would watch those any day. Meet the Feebles, like, I, I, I respect it for when I saw it, but I rewatched um that and bad taste and like they just don't do it for me they're not bad but it's just like boring they both bored me i think i think bad taste is slightly better than meet the feet yeah because bad, bad taste has the overacting of peter jackson playing two different characters yes yeah <laughs> which, which gives a little bit more steam to that movie that, that it otherwise would have but i think that but, i think that yeah. they're great movies in the sense of like don't give up on your fucking dreams because he made lord of the rings <laughs> like, yeah no and and like for what like i'm not and this is the thing i still really like bad taste but it's not a movie that i like put on as often as i used to but i'm always impressed by like you said it's a it's a both of those movies are like making a movie because you want to make a movie and finding a way to make it work, whether you had money to do it or not. Yeah. So like, I applaud that, mm -hmm. but like to me, he's always going to be, his peak is always going to be frighteners for me. Oh yeah. Great movie. Um, all right. So uh, Scott, anything that you've watched that you want to, want to give a, a good old shout out, a thumbs up and a, and a pat on the ass too. Yeah. Yeah. I do have one thing and it's oddly, re uh, it's oddly, um, applicable to this movie i finally watched the wasp woman what like the 60s movie yeah it's a good movie it's really fun it's not it shouldn't <laughs> be fun but it's it's fun i have that on a bunch of different like public domain yeah i watched <laughs> it on youtube movie. and no one's gonna take that down <laughs> yeah. but it's it's just it's it just feels so 
fun. I loved the thing that I loved the most about it was how bad the uh, special effects were, but also the fact that the cover is a wasp with a woman's head, but yeah. the actual monster is a woman with a wasp's head. Yeah. Now it was very much cashing in on the fly at the time yeah. with that artwork. It's, fun, it's a though. great poster. It's a great poster. I actually like the movie better than the poster, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that makes sense. I get what you're saying. But uh, yeah, no, that's a good one. That I think... Yeah, that's on at least two different public domain DVD <laughs> that, things that I own. I will actually just do some self uh, some self promotion because uh, I got two new podcasts that I'm producing that are both coming out this month. One is already out. One will be out uh, in the coming week. Uh, so, Roaring Twenties podcast hosted by Brooke and Andrew of the Disneydo podcast that's going to come out every other Sunday night, uh, and it's the two of them covering different topics of growing up in their 20s during the 2020s uh the first episode is a cringe-tastic episode where they look back on the past decade by reading their old statuses from 2010 via the facebook on this day platform. oh shit (laughs) oh shit uh the second episode which will be coming out probably right after this episode comes out uh is called do you love me and other red flags? Uh, and it's just them sharing terrible red flags from first dates on dating apps that they've experienced. In wait, their wait, life. wait. Are you telling me that somebody on a first date asked one of them if they love them already? Yep. Go ahead and listen to the oh, episode man. for more details. Fuck. Uh, and then also uh, coming out very, very soon, uh, my podcast, One Hit Thunder, hosted by Chris Fafios of Punchline. Uh, Each week, he goes through a different one-hit wonder with a guest and determines if the band's failed success was a one-hit blunder or if they constantly brought the one-hit thunder. Uh, So come and check that out. The first episode will be on Aqua Barbie Girl. Oh, nice. I already know (laughs) what I think about uh, about if they're a one-hit wonder, though. So so that one that's that's kind of a going to be a controversial episode. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so that's my thing. Brian, what do you have to promote? I got nothing, man. I really got Why nothing. Why don't you promote your business? <laughs> yeah, you got a company. Oh. And thousands of people that might be looking for an editor that listen. Oh, yeah, so I have a company. Um, <laughs> it, Jesus Christ. It is a production company right now. I'm, I'm starting this new technique, A, because it's cheaper for everyone, and it lets me do what I do, so... You know, believe it or not, my least favorite thing about video production is the actual production. Um, and really, we I, th- I feel like we really have taken for granted the fact that we all carry around a 4K camera in our pocket at all times. Like if you have an iPhone 8 or higher, you, you virtually have a, a 4K camera in your pocket. So that's that's the new thing is shoot your own content is what i'm really pitching and it's just for for businesses to you know businesses or individuals to to film stuff with with their iphone there's uh if they want to get more technical and more professional there's a on my page totemvisual.com there's a list of things you can buy off amazon you could literally buy the whole bundle for less than 200 dollars, and it's like a gimbal lights mics everything that connects directly to your phone um so you can shoot content like uh Literally, the movie Unsane was shot with an iPhone and your fucking company testimonials. You don't think a, an iPhone will be sufficient enough. It's just absolutely insane. Um, so, yeah. And and also, my wife is a – she works in a marketing company and video is how you need to present your company's content. 100%. Video, like, absolutely. The, the 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 statistics right now are fucking insane when it comes to the amount of people watching video versus not. Um, the fact that across the U.S., twenty percent of internet time is on Facebook. So like every hour, so you so that's taking every time that someone spends on the internet. Every person in America, twenty percent of that bundled is is on one website, which is fucking crazy. That's more than Google. That's more than everything else. Is people are on Facebook and they're watching videos. So it's it, it's not even like a luxury item anymore. It's one hundred percent a necessity. It's a it's a necessary asset for every company to have. If you're not having videos, you really need to have them. And you need Brian to, to help you to, make that to edit happen. them. Anyone yeah. can shoot. Editing's tough. I do it for for seventy five percent cheaper than if you were to hire me to come 
and light and and produce and mic you up and all that stuff. It is 75% cheaper across the board. So that's insane. So Totem Visual, T-O-T-U-M V-I-S-U-A-L dot com, dot right? Com. Yes. Totem, just for full clarification, Totem is Latin for everything. I understand that Totem Pole is spelled T-O-T-E-M. Even though my logo is a Totem Pole, it's called Art. Read a book. <laughs> 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 oh, and um, by this point, I will be done with Horrors 4, Lady Killers. Uh, that's two words as in female killers. Um, and that's going to be going off to um, my producer to be mixed and mastered and ready for March Monster Mania. But um, maybe there'll be some some content popping up here and there. Maybe I'm going to have Brian help me with some of that. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, if you do anything creative, um, people aren't going to give a shit about your creativity unless you make them feel like they're part of the process. Um, Megan has harped on me about this forever because I a couple months back, I, I dropped a new console crash EP that was like a fart in church. You know, it's just like, I, I think it's great. I love it. I, I write and record for myself, but it's also nice if people like it too. So um, if you uh, want to have people care about your content, like I everybody does, um, you have to have visuals for it. So let them be part of the conversation. So anyway, yeah, that, that'll be coming up. I, I just want to make a quick shout out that that's probably going to be showing up on the Facebook page a little bit. Uh, I won't inundate everybody. And if you want to see the whole process, you know, just you'll have to look at my personal social medias. So, And if you want to get one of those tracks before most of them are made available, a dollar donation a month on our Patreon, patreon.com backslash HMM podcast, you get a free song from Scott every month on our newsletter. So that's another option for you. Anyway, that was Return of the Swamp Thing, as picked by Scott. We will be back next week. Again, please go and rate, review, and give us them five-star reviews. And nom, 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 it's so tasty. It makes us so happy. <laughs> and we will be re- reading those reviews on the air starting in, like, February or March-ish time. So start writing those. We're so excited to see all the positive things you have to say about us because, you know, we, we, we need it. Come on. Come on. This is all we got, guys. <laughs> we need this. Um, also, go and check us out on social media, HMM Podcast on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of that other stuff. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll be back next week with another sequel. It's just Sequel City this month. Uh, so stay tuned and, you know, don't fly under the radar. You want to come and check out Horror Movie <laughs> Night. to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.